Good morning, it's Friday. It's eight something in the morning. Uh, I'm back in the office. Um, I've been doing a few time lapse videos, which I hopefully will have woven into this this week. Um, people seem to love them. Um, so, yeah, it just pretty much shows that I sit at my desk all day um, and sometimes go to meetings. So, uh, today started off with a tweet from a colleague at Warwick, Phil Davis, uh, who spotted that a paper I'd written with my good friends, uh, Dr. Farron Van Grau. Farron is an excellent academic up at um, Birmingham University, um, the fine economist Oscar Bastinza, uh, University of Granada, again, a global expert in structural equations modeling, incredibly charming guy. Nikos over in Reading, Nikos Studiantas, Again, a really smart guy. Um, we got together, we did a paper on uh, power and supply chains. Um, super interested in power, a construct of power over versus um, power with, and how mostly um, people seek to get power over. And actually, if you think about the way you, know, you become more powerful, a football team is powerful, if you like, um, because you all play together, so you share. Whereas when you have power over somebody, you're actually less powerful. But uh, in business particularly, we tend to try and get power over people. We did a paper looking using data from a very large publishing firm. And we looked at what sort of resources you're selling. So if we examine um, books, we can look at bestsellers, um, books that are new releases, or we can look at like classic novels. And what we see is your classic books are pretty much out of copyright. Um, they're very cheap, whereas the ones that are clearly you know, new and somebody's favorite has got the copyright on them, got the exclusive on them, they charge a lot more. So from that you can see how power is used to manipulate supply chains. That made me really want to look more at the construct of power, power and supply chains. Amazon particularly was positioning itself within the publishing industry supply chain and why it was able to do that, why it was able to effectively squeeze itself as a platform between publishers and suppliers as a new retailer and gain, supply, um, gain power in that retail supply chain through uh, its strategic positioning um, and the way it uses resources. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> My name is David Southward and I'm a senior business and research fellow <laughs> at the Bristol Business School. I understand the uh, uh, the BAM conference is indeed coming here, yes. Good to be awesome. It's been a busy day already. Um, I just got uh, some news that um, a bid has been successful. We have got funding. Create something called the Omni Manufacturing System, which is a micro factory that sits on the body. Initially, it will hopefully look at cancer treatments. And instead of you having to go to a hospital, have blood taken, have that sent off, that to be treated and, and, and grown in the lab and then returned to you, all of those steps in the supply chain can happen on the body. What I'm looking for there is, is, is what's the manufacturing business model, uh, how does the supply chain change. For me, I'm hoping this will be, in the longer term, um, a safer way of treating people, cheaper, obviously, more convenient for the individual because you're not going in and out of hospitals. You can just have this on your body. In my mind, it will be like a, a printer. You have this, this device and you just have different cartridges and those little cartridges will be the drugs or the precursors that you need to treat yourself. So uh, it's an EPSLC funded project, really great group of people um, led by um, a chap from Kent, Rob Barker, fantastic guy. Um, but yeah, quite excited that that project just got funded. Um, so just a second, heard about that, that's super exciting. And just looking at the screen now, uh, this is a paper by a colleague, uh, Rodrigo, who's worked really hard on getting this through. Um, and what this paper does is look at um, servitization, which is the move from selling products to providing service. My work gets cited a lot in his paper, which is pretty cool, um, because I'm an academic, we're all egomaniacs. But yeah, Rod's paper, he, he writes some nice papers, so it's nice to see uh, some success there. Today, I'm back on the value paper, and I've got two meetings, and it's Friday, uh, so we're pretty
pretty stoked, pretty fired up, and so good things are happening, work hard, good things happen, so let's crack on, start the day, 